So here we are back at the Wallingford Passive House and uh, fun stuff's going up. Um, we are up to framing the walls of the second floor. Uh, we're gonna get the deck on here by the end of the week. But uh, the complexity of this construction is kind of unique and some things we have to do here that we haven't had to do in some other ones um, are uh, the framing structure. The, the building has a lot of different elements coming at it uh, in terms of what's going on, on the ground floor, what we're transitioning to on the main floor. And we're stepping in on a number of different dimensions when we get to the second floor. And then the third floor steps in again. Um, so we have a lot of uh, 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 intricacies in the structural frame of the building. So we're down here in the basement, just starting off. On the other side of this wall is unconditioned space. That's the garage. Uh, so we're going to need a passive house door here. We've got our air barrier transitioning from sub slab going up the wall. Then we're going to transition to the floor system, the floor deck above. And then we're heading out to the outside. And then we're going to go up and step in. So we've got a lot of elements where we're moving back and forth in the building. And uh, so there are certain parts we have to include while we're framing. Um, a few more than on some other projects. Uh, and uh, like the Madrona project was a little bit more of a stacked system where it did transition in the basement, uh, about 60% of the basement, but most of the walls were a little bit more stacked. The framing there was complex also. Um, so the strategy used in both of these where we've got a nice substantial structural frame and then we're putting a good sized sweater on the outside works well in both cases. Um, but this one, uh, it was very, very important to have that nice, warm sweater on the outside of the complicated framing. Um, so we'll be uh, transitioning down at the bottom where we have our sub-slab poly that we're going to detail onto the structural sheathing. This is our structural framing. We're going to uh, uh, go after our, our panel edges at the bottom in the middle. And then when we're transitioning to the, uh, to the top side here, this is the kind of one of the most critical extensive areas in the building that we have to ensure we've detailed correctly. So Jesse's doing a great job here and getting ahead of uh, as much as we can uh, while, we're, while we're at it, while we're uh, making it happen here. So we can integrate um, the uh, whole building air barrier as soon as, as soon as possible. When we get up, there are, um, there's four different roof typologies in the building. So some are gonna uh, require uh, uh, a buried air barrier before we can test the building, so we're going to have to detail those really well. That's under the wing roofs and the deck roofs. Uh, so that's going to be going on here in the next couple weeks. We've got our windows coming in in three, three and a half weeks, and so we'll uh, hopefully just move right into detailing those too. Uh, and then we can test our air barrier throughout the whole building. But the, it's got a you know, nice, good detail work on the structural frame on the building. We've got our exterior insulation going in, so we can do our interior uh, basement wall framing. So uh, the, that's gonna be the EPS foam that goes around the exterior of the building. And we're, then we'll just, we're just going up. And so we're integrating a little bit of our thermal envelope, a little bit of our insulation while we're doing the framing. Definitely some of the air barrier while we're doing the framing. And uh, so just got to keep on our toes to make sure we're hitting it all uh, so we don't have to chase anything awkwardly later at a later moment.